In this video, we are going to review place value and base 10 blocks. These are our base 10 blocks. We have a cube, which is worth one. We have a long, which has the value of 10 because there are 10 cubes that make up a long. And then we have a flat and a flat is worth 100. There are 100 of these little cubes to make up one flat. Or there are 10 of these longs that make up the one flat. This one long represents the number 10. We can practice place value by writing the number 10. To understand place value, I like to draw myself a little chart, just like this. I write a T for tens place and an O for ones place. So we can write any two digit number in this chart to figure out which number is in the tens place and which number is in the ones place. So for the number 10, we can see that we have zero ones. There is zero in the ones place. There are no lone cubes sitting out here, so there are zero ones. But there is one ten, and the long represents the one ten. Now let's try to count this number. What number is represented by these longs and cubes? When we start counting, we like to start with the longs because we count those by tens. So let's count our longs first. 10, 20, 30, 40. And then when we get to our cubes, we start counting by ones. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. So these longs and cubes represent the number 46. Let's put the number 46 into our tens and ones chart to see which number is in the tens place and which number is in the ones place. To decide what number belongs here in the tens place, we need to see how many tens we have. Remember, a 10 is a long. So we have one, two, three, four longs, or four tens. So the number four can go into the tens place. To figure out what number goes into the ones place, we need to see how many cubes we have, because a cube is worth one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can put a six in the ones place, and just like we counted, this shows the number 46. The number 46 has four tens and six ones. Here's another example. Let's practice counting the longs and cubes. Remember, we start with the longs and we count by tens. 10, 20, stop. No more longs to count. Now we count by ones. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Our new number is 30. This is the number 30. If we draw our tens and ones chart, Let's see which number is in the tens and which number is in the ones. The number 30 has a three in the tens and a zero in the ones place. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? There's a three in the tens, but I only see two longs here. Do you know why? This is because we must need to exchange our cubes for a long. How many cubes do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
We said before that 10 cubes is the same as one long. So when we have 10 cubes, we can exchange them for one long. An exchange means we get rid of all of our 10 cubes and take a long instead. Now we have three longs. Our number is still 30. Because we have a three in the tens place, we have three tens, and we just exchanged our cubes, so we have zero cubes left, and a zero in the ones place. So what happens if I add one more long? Let's see. When I add one more long, it's the same as adding one ten. We started with 30 with three longs and we add one more. So our number sentence would be 30 plus 10. What is 30 plus 10? Let's count our longs. 10, 20, 30, 40. The number is 40 and we have one, two, three, four tens. Instead of a three in the tens place, we now have a four in the tens place because we have four longs. What about the ones place? Does that need to change? We still don't have any cubes, so the zero in our ones place can stay. Now we can see that when you add 10 to a number, the ones place stays the same. It's only the tens place that changes. In my next video, we will learn how to find 10 more and 10 less than a number just by using our brains. We don't need any of these longs and cubes. See you next time.